Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless god gives a dire warning to anyone who would cause a child to sin as we read in matthew 18 6 and 7 but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea woe to the world because of offenses for offenses must come but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. When the world crossed the line with gay marriage, those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ knew that sexual immorality would now progress into an anything goes mentality. On Saturday, a nightclub in Dallas held an event called Drag Your Kids to Pride. At the event, little kids danced with drag queens and tipped them with dollar bills. This is grotesque, sexualizing children always is. So there were a small number of brave protesters outside. One of them was our friend Alex Stein. He tried to get into the event because it was a public event, and so he was assaulted. Watch. Get away. Get away. Chill out. Take your mask off. Good for Alex Stein. If more people acted like that, we'd have less sexualizing children. Notice the last thing they want you to do is see it. That's why they attack you when you do. Jason Rands is a radio host in Seattle. He joins us tonight. Jason, thanks so much for coming on. This is so crazy. It's hard not to think. Uh, I don't know what to think of this. What are we, what are we watching? Yeah, I mean... Uh I'm old enough to remember when drag queen story hours were the things that we were outraged at because that's so clearly inappropriate. In this case, you've got a neon pink sign as a backdrop declaring it's not going to lick itself as adult drag performers are dancing and lip syncing and even collecting dollar bills from young kids as their parents were sipping on their drinks, having a good time. It took place at Mr. Mr., which is a gay nightclub and bar, dragged the kids to pride. It was pitched as a family-friendly event where you see adults in drag performing in this club as kids were either watching from the sidelines and handing out those tips. In some cases, they were even joining and posing as their parents were watching. Now, one of the performers actually declared in an interview that he hopes that kids start performing drag when they get older because it's a confidence booster. And as this was going on, as you pointed out, there was a group of protesters from an organization called Protect Texas Kids. They showed up. They were confronted by supporters of the drag performance. Check this video out. Take it away. Yeah. No, don't. Okay, don't. Hey, don't, don't you want to get my? I fell. Yeah, 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 let's see how this turns out. Get your Shut the up. up. Shut the up. Shame. You are child abuse. Shame on you. And you're not Shame a real woman. Shame on you. Absolutely insane video. Romans 128 through 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Verse 32 brings Romans chapter 1 to an end with a very bleak view of human nature. The point of the last half of the verse is to show that many people not only do things that they know deserve death, but also entice others to do them and approve when they do. In other words, the end point of depravity is not just the love affair with sin, but the desire to bring others with you to destruction. It's not just that people choose death for themselves in the passion of sin, 
but that they become suicidal at the spiritual level and assist others in eternal self-destruction by approving their sin. We are watching this play out right before our very eyes. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Vladimir Putin continues to escalate the war in Ukraine. He's now threatening to expand his list of targets if the United States sends the Ukrainians long-range missiles. Russian nuclear forces have reportedly been holding drills near Moscow. That's ignited fears that Putin might follow through on a previous threat to use nuclear weapons. Dale heard reports on this nightmare scenario. This is a simulation of a full-scale nuclear war between Russia and NATO. Casualties mount at a rate of 10 million people per hour. Four hours. Five hours. A Princeton University simulation estimated more than 90 million immediate casualties. Some studies have placed total casualties in the hundreds of millions. Then there would be a nuclear winter for weeks or months or even years when clouds of soot block sunlight creating sub-freezing temperatures which along with high radiation levels would lead to even more deaths. What was once unthinkable is now regularly debated on Russian state TV, using nuclear weapons against Ukraine, NATO, or even against U.S. territory. This Russian parliament member says it would only take four nuclear missiles to destroy both coasts of the United States. This journalist says if Russia loses in Ukraine, Ukraine, a nuclear strike seems probable. But is this just theater intended to scare the West? Would Vladimir Putin actually resort to nuclear weapons? Experts disagree. But what is disturbing is that some think he would. Rebecca Koffler, born in the Soviet Union and a former intelligence official for the U.S. government, is the author of Putin's Playbook. She says Vladimir Putin would absolutely use a nuclear weapon. This type of conflict is exactly the type of situation for which uh, Putin, on his orders, the so-called nuclear warfare uh, doctrine was developed that was called escalate to de-escalate. You're escalating by popping a nuke in a conventional conflict, in this case of Ukraine, in order to de-escalate the conflict. And if Russian intelligence services assess accurately or by mistake that the U.S. and NATO are about to intervene, Putin preemptively would activate that doctrine. Koffler says Putin believes he has the upper hand because of his large arsenal of small tactical nuclear weapons intended to destroy battlefield targets rather than whole regions. Russia holds advantage in tactical nukes, uh, 1 to 10 ratio. We have 200, the Russians have 2,000. Some have speculated that if Putin orders a nuclear strike, his staff might disobey the order, triggering a coup. Koffler says that won't happen. This is such a uh, Western and American style thinking. Nobody is going to refuse Putin's orders. We're talking about the person who has authorized multiple assassinations. While some experts say that Putin would never risk a nuclear war that could also destroy Russia, others warn that with Vladimir Putin, nothing can be ruled out. North Korea on Sunday fired eight short-range ballistic missiles towards the East Sea. According to South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff, some of the missiles were fired from the Sunan district of Pyongyang, where the regime has its main airfield. Sunday's launch came just a day after South Korea and the U.S. wrapped up a three-day joint naval exercise in waters off Okinawa in a demonstration of the strength of their alliance and their joint defense capabilities. Other missile tests by the North this year have also come after Allied military drills or talks. Less than two weeks ago, on May 25th, Pyongyang fired a suspected ICBM and two apparent short-range ballistic missiles into the East Sea. That was just a day after U.S. President Joe Biden left Korea.
following a summit with President Yoon sung yeol in which they agreed to strengthen the allies' defenses. South Korea's military is also on high alert for the North to conduct what would be its seventh nuclear test. Satellite imagery has shown work underway at the regime's main nuclear test site. And leader Kim Jong-un himself said in March that he's been ramping up the North's nuclear program so that the weapons can be used at any time. The U.S. and South Korea launched eight ballistic missiles into the sea this morning. The show of force matching North Korea's weapons test a day earlier. South Korean military leaders say the drill was aimed at demonstrating an ability to respond swiftly to possible North Korean attacks. The North has launched 18 rounds of missile tests this year alone. And experts say those launches are a ploy to help negotiate economic and security concessions from a position of strength. This morning, new concerns about the growing number of monkeypox cases across the country. In the U.S., the CDC reporting 31 confirmed cases as of Monday afternoon. Washington, D.C.'s first reported cases coming on Sunday. California's total rising to six Monday. This was also identified through uh, contact tracing. With other cases reported in New York, Florida, Colorado, Illinois, and Utah. Globally, more than 1,000 confirmed and suspected monkeypox cases have been reported from 29 countries. Monkeypox is a rare but potentially serious viral illness, usually found in West and Central Africa. We know that you can get it uh, from skin-to-skin -skin contact, particularly if there's an open sore, uh, but you can also get it from the respiratory route. Common symptoms include fever, aches, and rashes all over the body. Health officials say the risk to the general public is low, but you should seek medical care immediately if you develop new unexplained skin rash or lesions on any part of the body, with or without fever and chills. It's been a massive cleanup effort in South Florida today after a powerful storm flooded areas, forcing rescues and turning high-priced cars into waterlogged trash. That system went on to become the first named storm of the season, Tropical Storm Alex. Some parts of South Florida got more than a foot of rain this weekend, leaving cars and drivers stranded in knee-deep water in Miami and making others look more like amphibious vehicles. It was the result of a tropical system not organized enough to be a named storm at the time, but still packing a punch, leading to water rescues and some flooded homes. This is just the beginning season of the rain, and we are going to it out. Forecasters have predicted an above average hurricane season this year, and just days into it, they urge residents in hurricane and flood prone parts of the country to be prepared. A night on the town ended underwater as these drivers in the Brickell neighborhood quickly became stranded. Some tried to press through the wall of water, and even parked cars were seen bobbing in the waves. Come daylight, video from Miami-Dade Fire Rescue shows crews using a high-water vehicle to get residents out of their flooded homes and on to higher ground. She didn't have time to react. A 30-year-old woman died on Sunday, swept by torrential rains in the northern city of Rouen. Her body was found trapped under a car. Hailstones, some roughly the size of a tennis ball, roads completely destroyed, and houses up in flames after being hit by lightning, as France experiences its most intense and widespread thunderstorms in 20 years. All the houses were impacted, roofs, windows, tiles, everything. Not a single house in my area was left untouched. More than 50,000 lightning strikes were recorded across France on Saturday, with a huge impact on road and rail. 15,000 households remain without electricity on Sunday. One sector that was particularly hit is the agriculture sector. This farmer saw 100 millimeters of rain flood his fields in just an hour. He lost over 80 percent of his production. What can we do? I'm in total disarray today. I don't know what to do. I haven't slept. I won't sleep in the days to come. A year's worth of work that goes up in smoke in 10 minutes. It's just unacceptable. Farmers already had to endure harsh conditions last month with the hottest and driest weeks on record in France. An unusual heat episode made more likely with climate change. They now have to deal with the consequences of scourging hail. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. 
All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16, 8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. And Pakistan is the fifth largest producer of mangoes in the world. It is a major contributor to Pakistan's economy and not to mention it provides employment to thousands of people. But the ongoing heat wave in South Asia is threatening harvest there. This is Thando Alayar in Pakistan's Sindh province. Normally a farming paradise. They grow wheat, sugarcane, cotton and mangoes here, but this year is proving to be tricky. An intense heat wave is sweeping through South Asia. Temperatures have crossed 50 degrees Celsius in some places. The result? A major drop in crop productivity. Pakistan's average mango output is around 1.8 million tons. This year, it's likely to be around half of that. Two reasons for this drop. One, the heat wave, and two, the resulting water shortage. So the South Asian heat wave is not just a health hazard. It is also an economic crisis. In Pakistan, mango output is down. In neighboring India, wheat production has been hit. What the region needs is a sound climate plan. If not, next year's heat wave could be even worse. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. <laughs> Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing. 
but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Tonight, we begin with the growing epidemic of gun violence that spread across 10 states with more than a dozen mass shootings since Friday. At least 17 people were killed and nearly 70 others injured in shootings from Philadelphia to Chattanooga, from Grand Rapids, Michigan to Somerton, South Carolina. The rise in gun violence and mass shootings seems to be impacting every community across the country. There have been 246 mass shootings so far in just this year, while today is just the 157th day of the year. In the last month, shootings have taken place at churches, grocery stores, doctor's offices, and elementary schools. According to the Gun Violence Archive, more than 700 children under the age of 18 have been killed by firearms so far this year. And this follows data from the CDC showing that for the first time in history, Firearms were the leading cause of death for children in the U.S. in 2020. Another weekend of deadly gun violence across America. The latest mass shootings happening in big cities and small, from Philadelphia to Chattanooga to Socorro, Texas. At least six people have been killed, more than two dozen others wounded. Philadelphia police are investigating whether this fight captured on cell phone video led to a mass shooting in one of the city's most popular gathering places. Three people were killed and 12 others injured after authorities say multiple shooters fired into a crowd of people. Officers stationed nearby engaged the gunmen as they ran from the scene. The officer drew his weapon and fired several times in the direction of the unknown male we believe striking him. In Chattanooga, Tennessee, investigators believe a mass shooting near a nightclub left three dead and 14 injured. There's gonna be multiple shooters. We cannot confirm how many. Cities across the country are grappling with mass shootings this weekend. Today in Uvalde, Texas, another funeral service held for a victim of the elementary school massacre. She was just loved. 10-year-old Alethea Ramirez dreamed of one day attending art school in Paris. This is a parent's nightmare, and this is the worst of the worst. The growing threat of violence has Americans on edge. Fears over a possible active shooter sent shoppers running for cover at two New York City malls over the weekend. Investigators now believe fireworks may have set off the panic. Very scary, very scary. You don't know when it's going to happen. And this is the second consecutive weekend in Brooklyn where crowds scrambled for cover after hearing some sort of loud noise. Those experiencing the panic say there is trauma in the aftermath of several mass shootings. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Tonight we are learning more about a deadly shooting outside an Iowa church. That shooting happened last night in the parking lot of Cornerstone Church in Ames. The sheriff says a man shot and killed two women before killing himself. Deputies apparently had a uh, tell us that he apparently had a relationship with one of the women and that this was a targeted attack. Now to a bizarre and frightening story from Wisconsin where a retired judge was shot and killed in his home early Friday by a gunman with a purported hit list that included several prominent elected leaders. The call for help came in around 6.30 a.m. after two shots were fired in the retired judge's home. His neighbor's son from across the street is banging on the door saying that someone murdered his father. The Juneau County Special Tactics and Response Team entered the residence and located the homeowner, a 68-year-old male who was deceased. Police rendered aid to the suspect, 56-year-old Douglas Udi, who appeared to have shot himself. In 2005, state judge John Romer sent the suspect to prison for six years on weapons charges. A hit list was reportedly found naming Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and Democratic Governors Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan and Tony Evers of Wisconsin. Threats and inappropriate communications against federal courts and judges have ballooned to more than 4,500 last year. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. 
Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24 verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. When a person comes to know Jesus as their Savior, they are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their salvation as eternally secure. To be clear, salvation is more than saying a prayer or making a decision for Christ. Salvation is a sovereign act of God, whereby an unregenerate sinner is washed, renewed, and born again by the Holy Spirit, as we read in John 3.3 3 and Titus 3.5. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When salvation occurs, God gives the forgiven sinner a new heart and puts a new spirit within him, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The spirit will cause the saved person to walk in obedience to God's word, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 27 and James 2, 26. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what about repentance? Repentance is not a work we do to earn salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless God draws that person to himself. As we read in John 6:44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Repentance is something God gives. It is only possible because of his grace. All of salvation, including repentance and faith, is a result of God drawing us, opening our eyes, and changing our hearts. God's long-suffering leads us to repentance, and so does his kindness, as we read in 2 Peter 3.9 and Romans 2.4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness? forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. 
Ephesians 2, 8, 9 declares, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Works are not the cause of salvation. Works are the evidence of salvation. Faith in Christ always results in good works. The person who claims to be a Christian but lives in willful disobedience to Christ has a false or dead faith and is not saved. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. That is why John the Baptist called people to produce fruit in keeping with repentance, as we read in Matthew 3.8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. A person who has truly repented of his sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of a changed life as we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A person who has not repented of their sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of the works of the flesh as we read in Galatians 5.19-21. through Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. A person who has crucified the flesh and belongs to Christ will give evidence of the Spirit, as we read in Galatians 5.22-24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Believers are born again, regenerated when they believe. For a Christian to lose his salvation, he would have to be unregenerated. The Bible gives no evidence that the new birth can be taken away. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, as we read in John 14, 17. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him or knows Him, but you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit baptizes all believers into the body of Christ, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For a believer to become unsaved, he would have to be unindwelt and detached from the body of Christ. John 3.15 states that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If you believe in Christ today and have eternal life, but lose it tomorrow, then it was never eternal at all. Hence, if you lose your salvation, the promises of eternal life in the Bible would be in error. Scripture says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, the same God who saved you is the same God who will keep you. Once we are saved, we are always saved. Praise God, our salvation is most definitely, eternally secure. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get 